Let's go. Yeah. So, Gibby, you're on tour in, in France these days. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about what you've been up to since your last album was released? It was, I think, a long five years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you planning on releasing new material? Or? Uh, yeah, I, I've been working on a new record for a while, yeah. and, and right now it's about halfway done. Okay. Um, I, I planned on making a record a few years ago, but when I did the Rockstar Supernova project, it kind of took all my songs that I had for my stuff. Mm -hmm. We had to come up with something from somewhere. So it's been a while, you know, it's, it's just been a while. And in the, I produce bands, you know, I'm always off playing with somebody, you know, if I'm not, you know, doing something on my own, I play guitar for other people. I yeah. did the MC5 stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm always busy. I mean, I make my living as a musician, so this is the only thing I, yeah. I do do. But it, when you mark them with records, it, it does go by, man. You know, I didn't realize how long ago it was I put out a record. Yeah. Five years ago, it's, yeah, uh, I know it's, it's a long time. <laughs> Actually, about records, you are uh, recorded. It's five. It's five o'clock somewhere, you know, from yep. such a snake pit, and uh, two tracks on is uh, on your first solo album with Slash. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us a little how it is to to work with Slash in the studio? How is he? Uh... Slash is great to work with in the studio. Um, Especially because um, I mean, when, when we did the Snake Pit stuff, we were actually working on Guns material. You know, mm -hmm. we were writing songs for yeah. Guns at that time. So I was showing him some ideas I had, and Matt was coming by, and so we were recording them at his place. And so um, it was great because um, Slash has a different style from me, and he hears mm -hmm. things differently. So like I would bring him something, and he would always put a twist to it. You know, which I think is what he does to the Guns material too. Yeah. You know, he just takes something that you hear and he puts his touch on it, but it's a twist. He makes mm -hmm. it, it always makes it a little dirtier and a little slinkier, yeah. which I've always thought was great. So on my tracks on, on the record, I thought he did a great job. And like I said, I, I like that experience. Matt is such a talented musician. You know, it was easy. It was almost too easy, you know, bringing in material and watch it grow, you know. Since that, you know, when I make my records, I'm basically telling everybody what to play. You know, you do this, you do yeah. that. I mean, unless... You know, it's it's uh, you know somebody like Brian Tishy playing drums where he knows what to do. Mm -hmm. So um, that was it was awesome. It was great. Cool. And actually, do you still uh, see Slash, Dub, Matt, or maybe even Axel? Um, uh, no, <laughs> I haven't seen Axel. I don't even know how long. I mean, uh, so since the the time when you know uh, you went us he he went on stage with you, it's like oh my god, uh, that's at right, the cat club. club. That's the yeah. last time I seen him. Yeah, yeah. so it's like twelve years ago. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's the last time I've seen him. I see Duff all the time. Our kids go to the same school together, and oh, we really? live five blocks apart from each other. Okay. So I see him a little bit more. And uh, I, I haven't really hung out with Slash in a long time, and but recently I've seen him a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's he has some parties at his house and stuff, yeah. so we go to that. Um, and uh, Matt is the one that I've known the best over the years. I knew him before he was in Guns N' Roses, before he was in the cult, you know, so, you know, we run into each other at shows and I do uh, Camp Freddy stuff with them, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, I'd say pr fairly regularly I see everybody, you know. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Could you tell us a little about your guitars and amps, you know, the kind of stuff you're using, what are your favorite guitars uh, these days? Let's see, what is what? <laughs> I've actually switched over to Matchless. Um, uh, about to, actually, when I did the Rockstar Supernova stuff, I was kind of looking for something a little different because I'm the only guitar player in the band, and I wanted to have a little bit of a bigger sound, you know, some effects mm -hmm. which I normally don't use. I usually, you know, have a wah wah, a fuzz pedal, a little delay, and that's it. You know, so in that band, I, I had to make it a little bit bigger, so I switched over to Matchless, which is really just a Marshall. You know, okay. it's just a modified Marshall. Um, with that being said, tonight I'm playing a Marshall. <laughs> I'm playing my same old 50 watt uh, JMP Marshall that I've had forever and ever mm -hmm. and ever. It's what I played on the Candy record, Kill for Thrills. You know, every every record I ever made, I, it's it's the same. So I'm 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 really a Les Paul and a Marshall guy. Okay. You know, I, like I said, a little fuzz box or wah wah or something. But my favorite guitar is. Um, my favorite guitar is my Zematis. It's it's a guitar that was made in England um, in 1994 by a, a great great uh, guitar maker, and um, it's it's just it's like the best Les Paul ever made. You oh, know? Really? And I don't bring it out on the road anymore because it's kind of valuable, mm -hmm. you know. So it kind of stays at home <laughs> yeah. and it, it's on recordings. Or if I play like a live show in Los Angeles where I can physically carry it, I'll bring mm -hmm. it. But um, I use those. Uh, 
Gibson Les Paul Classics, the 60s classic. That's like my guitar. I can take one right off the wall and not do anything except for take the pickguard off, and it's perfect. So, um, you know, just call Gibson. Let me have a black one. Let me have a black one. Let me have a black one and a gold one. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. And I got a lot of those. <laughs> Telecasters. I like tellies too. So yeah. Um, so now the the tricky question. Uh, uh, did you listen to Chinese Democracy? Yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think about it? Um, I think it's a really good record. I honestly do. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great record. I think knowing. Uh, Knowing what I know about Axel and knowing what I know that what direction he wanted to take the band, I think he fucking hit the nail on the head. I think he did a great job. Now, with that being said, is it the kind of music and the kind of records I would buy? No, okay. it's not. It's not. It, it just, um, and like I said, that's not saying it's not good, bad, or whatever. It's just um, there's a lot going on on the record. Mm -hmm. There's and, and look, it's. Musicians are terrific. Yeah. Uh, I thought they did a great job as far as creativity and, and everybody contributed to the record. Mm -hmm. I thought they did a great job. Um, but I still, to this day, you know, I mean, I listen to the Beatles. I listen yeah. to the Stones, you know. I mean, look, I like the Black Keys. I like the Strokes. It's not to say I don't like new music. I just, I've always liked bluesier stuff. Yeah. And, and, and that is always what I loved about Guns N' Roses was it had a blues and it had a punk mm -hmm. edge to it. You know, and you know what's strange is when I got drawn into Guns N' Roses, I got drawn into Guns N' Roses because of uh, Slash's guitar playing, mm -hmm. not really because of Axel. You know, not to say you know Axel's, in my opinion, is still the greatest frontman ever, but it was the guitar playing and the sound that drew me to the band. Yeah. So, okay, <laughs> um, and what do you think about the uh, the social networks? You know, like Twitter um, <laughs> and this new way to communicate with the fans do you uh... uh well if you ask me if i like it no no <laughs> <laughs> it's just because i'm a more private person you okay. know i'm a, uh i think that i think it's great look change is inevitable and it's gonna mm -hmm. happen okay and i got no problem with that i got no problem with music changing it would be boring if we all like the same music it would be boring if, if no new music or you know ever came out things have to change i'm okay with that It just seems that nowadays you have to, marketing is more important than playing guitar, piano, yeah. or drums. And um, I, I think when it, gets, when it got to a point that you can make a record and not be an actual musician, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous for the art aspect of it, you know? And um, obviously it's not going to come back around. You know, yeah. things are going to keep going and that's fine. We. You're interviewing me, so this is my point. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I like I like music. That aspect of it, you know, with the social media, is it's just not me. I don't think about getting on my Twitter and go da 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 da. Yeah. I do do it. I, I have a Facebook page. I have a Twitter page, and I actually do them personally. But I'm not good at it, and and it's not the first thing I think about yeah. every day. <laughs> it's like the last thing I think about. Yeah, I understand. Uh, actually, about the bands, what, what kind of bands do you listen to these days? Uh, um, kind of well, I, mean, I still listen to a lot of stuff that I grew up with. You know, like I said, I, you know, still listen, the, on, on the way, we had a long drive today. Let me think about what I listen to today. I listen to Fleetwood Mac today. Oh, cool. <laughs> with uh, Peter Green. And I listen to, uh, uh, what else do I listen to? God, what else do I listen to? I listen to Fleetwood Mac, I, I don't remember. <laughs> But anyway, like I said, I do like new bands. You know, like I said, I, I love the Black Keys. I think they're fucking uh -huh. awesome. And I went and saw them live at Coachella, and they were great. Uh, I think the Strokes are great. I, I really like what they're doing, you know, as far as being a new band. And Well, they're not new anymore, but, you know, still using guitars to make good, creative yeah. new music. I think that's that's fantastic. And what did you think about the uh, Slash's uh, solo album, you know, that came it, out? The, the one he did? did? Yeah. I thought he did a great job. Yeah. I mean, I it it's kind of... What I was explaining to him a long time ago, you know, when when we did Snake Pit, you know, Snake Pit was like I said, was gun stuff that we had all this material, we made it. We there was it was never going to be a band, you know, mm -hmm. it was going to be a, a, a record and a tour, you know, and, and that was it. I always thought that for Slash to stand out on his own, it would be great to have a singer to mm -hmm. work with, you know, somebody that he could play off of and have the identity that he has with his guitar. And so I thought I thought it was a fantastic idea, and I thought he did a great job on it. I, I, like I said, I'm. You can talk to me all day about Slash. It's a very positive experience for me. You know, yeah. He, yeah, I think he's one of those guys that um, has really kept his integrity all these mm. years. I really do. I think it's hard to be a guitar player 
carve an identity and have integrity in this day and age, and, and he's done it. Hmm. Uh, and when you're not on, you know, in the studio or on stage, you are, we know you are a motorbike addict. Yes, I am. <laughs> you love it. What are the passions or hobbies do you have? Uh, oh, no, that's it. That's, that's full it? time. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, if you go over my house, I have a full studio, like full on regular recording studio. But I also have a garage filled with motorcycles and welders and power tools and cars. And okay. I, got, I got problems. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes... Um, there's that choice, like if I'm not, you know, on tour or making a record, I wake up and go, am I going to work on the bike or am I going to go work on That's some music? I got to <laughs> tell you, at this point, it's kind of 50-50, <laughs> which is not good. I should be working on music, but right now I'm kind of having fun with the bike. Uh, just to finish the interview, could you, could you tell us something in French? Um, like, oh, my God. <laughs> Merci la France. Why, what am I saying, though? It's, it means uh, thank you, France. Are you sure? No. Because yeah. <laughs> I know what Merci. Mer mer uh, pronounce it for me one yeah. time. Merci. Merci. La. La. France. Fra France. Merci. La. France. Now it's all about the chow. You got to dig down and get the chow. <laughs>
Marseille, la France.